What's up everyone? All right, so today we've got an extra special midday market recap for you. I talk a little bit about where I'm at on my million dollar journey from $583 to 1 million. Where am I at right now? I'm going to talk about that during the midday market recap. Also going to talk a little bit about my journey getting started trading. It's now been 10 year, nearly 10 years since I had a traditional nine to five job and Man, life is good. I love it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, a little bit about my strategy, and a little bit about some of our students. And of course, I'm going to talk about today's trades. All right. One stock I trade today, $960 profit in 30 minutes. Life is good. It's summertime. I'm going to go outside and enjoy the day. But watch the Midday Market Recap. Enjoy it. Leave me comments, questions below. I'll come back and answer them later today. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow in the chat room. All right, everyone. So we're going to go over uh, the trades from today. Another uh, another green day. That's what I love. Nine hundred sixty dollars and eighty four cents of profit. You know, this is just kind of right now low stress trading. I'm not taking big size. I'm not trying to swing for the fences. If I can get five hundred to a thousand dollars a day, I'm happy with that, and I'm stopping there. I'm not going to overstay my welcome in this market. So today I traded for thirty minutes. 30 minutes of trading, $960, and now I've got the rest of the day to do whatever I want. And, you know, that's 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 the dream, it really is, you know, just to have that level of consistency. Now, uh, yesterday I made about $800, so today's a little bit better than yesterday, but we're still seeing a bit of choppiness in the market. We're not seeing the level of follow-through um, that we saw in, in May or, or in the beginning of April. And so what I mean by that is in May and the beginning of April, I was seeing back to back three, four, five thousand dollar days. We were seeing stocks going up 20, 30, 40 percent. And right now it feels like we're seeing a lot of stocks going up uh, 5 percent, 10 percent, but we're not seeing those exaggerated moves. So one of the things that we know is that uh, the market can get extremely hot and we can have these really big, um, you know, kind of parabolic, um, irrational moves where stocks just squeeze and they go up and up and up and as an example would we see last month we saw IMTE this stock go from two dollars and 29 cents in one day to a high of 41 dollars and 26 cents that's crazy that was absolutely crazy and that level of exuberance that got a lot of traders into the market looking for uh, an opportunity to cash in and make some money so Inevitably, what we ended up seeing last month was a lot of really strong momentum, and that's why I finished the month with $75,000 of total profit. It was a great month. I mean, it really was pretty impressive. This month, uh, we're seeing a little bit of a correction in the sense that we're not seeing those exaggerated moves. When stocks do start to pop up, um, they're not always uh, holding up as well. They end up fading back down. And so it kind of feels like a market where we're getting, you know, one step forward, two steps back. And this is a market where you got to be really disciplined. You got to get in, get your profit, and get the heck out before you lose it. And so that's what I've been doing. And I, I don't like to compare trading to gambling. Um, there, there are some similarities uh, when it comes to you can either be a trader or you can be a gambler. And I was talking to a student yesterday, and I'm not going to call you out by name, um, but um, he's doing something that I used to do a lot. And so what it is is, you know, he's he's trading and, you know, he takes a couple of trades and he loses money. And instead of walking away, he starts to get frustrated and he, and he over trades and he starts revenge trading. And, he you know, you go from being down 3000 to down 4000 down 5000 And then you get lucky, you get a $3,000 winner and now you're only down 2000 And then you try to get lucky again and then you're down 8000 and you try to get lucky one more time and you're down 16,000. That's what we call snowball days, right? It's just you let it go and go and go. And, and at that point, you're not trading anymore. You're just gambling. And I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not calling him out as like, you know, a mean thing or anything because I've been there and I've done exactly that. I've done it. I did it so many times that I finally got to a point where I was like, Ross, are you going to be a trader or are you going to be a gambler? Because you can't be both and you got to follow rules. So for me, when I go to Las Vegas and I actually do gamble, uh, knock on wood, I've never lost money in Las Vegas. I've always walked away with more money than I started with, and it's because of a strategy that I use. Now, the strategy that I use is a little bit risky, 
Um, but it works, and I follow the rules to the T. So if I go with $5,000, uh, you know, with blackjack, I start, um, you know, with a $50 chip. And if I lose, then I go to 100. And if I lose again, I go to 200. If I lose again, I go to 400. If I lose again, I go to 800. If I lose again, I go to 1600. And then when I win, when I'm out down 16, I make it back and I go back to break even or back to green. And you keep doing that and as long as the table has a high enough limit, you'll always get back, you'll always get back. And then you have to know when to walk away. Statistically, you're not gonna lose uh, 25 times in a row. So, you know, you, you know, as long as you have the cash in your pocket, you can always get yourself out. And so by using that strategy, I always walk away with money in my pocket. And it's not a lot, usually it's just a little bit, but one thing that's really important is to know when to walk away. So at a certain point, when you get yourself, you know, you finally do get into the green, you've got to walk away. Now today I started in the red. First trade out of the gates, I lost money on it. And that was a little bit disappointing. You know, I, I don't like to lose, uh, but I lost money. I lost $700 on my first trade. And so on trade number two, I get back into the same stock and I'm able to recover some of the loss. And I'm down, uh, well, let's let's just we'll go right into it. All right, so first trade, SEII. This was right off the watch list. And um, and the only comparison there uh, with gambling is is knowing when to walk away. That's really it. And, and that you can actually do well. People do go to Vegas and actually make money because they have strategy, whether they're counting cards or they have another strategy. Uh, there is, there are ways to be profitable and there's also ways just to throw away all your money and it's a choice, you can choose, right? So um, for me with trading, I, have, I follow a very strict set of rules and that's what keeps me in the green, consistency, consistency, right? It's just staying really focused. Uh, now, with SEII, this was on our gap scanner this morning, pre-market high was uh, 432. All right, so it drops down a little bit, uh, but then it starts to surge up and I said pre-market, I said, guys, I am going to buy this stock if it breaks over 432. That's where I'm a buyer, right? So I said that right away. I mean, there was no no question that that's where I was gonna get in. All right, so the bell rings and it starts squeezing up. And as I saw those buyers, that's where I started to jump in. So I saw buyers at 27, I jumped in, added at 30, and I added again at 40. But you can see here that I kept getting partial fills. So instead of having a full 5,000 or 7,500 share position, I ended up having um, only 3,600 shares. So I kind of had a small position on this. It didn't really hold up super well, which was a little disappointing. Um, so, I, so I have this sort of smaller position. It was just, I wasn't able to get filled. It pops up in that first candle up to a high of 450. And I saw John uh, in the room, uh, who you guys of course know, John L10, he uh, took his profit. Instead of adding at 41, he was like, I'm taking profit, I'm selling it. And he made $400 on the first trade. I decided to add and be a little bit more aggressive. It pops up to a high of 50 and then it drops down and I ended up stopping out on this candle at 410. And that was not what I wanted. I lost $700 on the very first trade. And so at that point I was like, all right, well, now I have to be careful. I'm in the red. I certainly want to get myself out of the hole, but the market has been a bit choppy. I have to be really, really careful. All right, so I said to myself, I'll just wait, hold tight, let's see if it holds up. So it's curling, it starts to pop up a little bit, but what you notice is that it pops up and then drops down, and then it squeezes, and then it comes back up again right here, and it pops up and drops down, but I went ahead and I bought. So I said, I'm watching this over 430. If it breaks 430, I'm a buyer again. It breaks 430 and I jumped in, but I got filled at 437 and 438 because I was using my hotkeys. So I got in it a little bit too high, but I said I was getting in it, so that's where I got in it. And uh, at that point, I'm holding with a stop, uh, basically at the low of this pullback of 406. And I'm feeling a little bit nervous because that's a 30 cent stop, which is 1,500 shares or $1,500. So you know, I was like, all right, well, let's give this a second. It does a one minute micro pullback right here, 431, and then boom, it takes off. So as it takes off right here, I add. You can see I add. It was like two minutes later at 448. So now I'm like, I'm adding on this because it's looking to me like it's gonna break over the half dollar. So I said, guys, I'm gonna watch this to add over the half dollar. So it hits 450 and then it pops up to a high of 483. Not bad at all. I mean, that's that's not a bad move, um, but it was a little bit touch and go. And the fact that it had done a false breakout right here and I was, and I was down about $1,000 on it, and that would have put me down about 1700 on the day, I was quick to start selling when it came back up. 
You know, I just seen danger and I was like, all right, I gotta start getting out. So I sell half at um, 59, sell more at 58. And then I was like, you know what? I can always get back in. And as it pops up here, it pulls back for a second at 460. And as it pops up, I add at 465. Now I'm thinking if it breaks over 475, there might be a chance this thing hits $5. So I'm starting to think there's a little more potential. End up selling at 464. I add at 480, sell at 483, or sorry, I add at 483, um, sell at 484, 482. You know, I just kind of felt like I kept buying this at high a day and it was dropping down. It wasn't holding up very well. And then finally, on my last trade, uh, it's now it now does this little false breakout here. So after all those trades, I was up about $500. So $500 of profit is is pretty good. And I was thinking this might be a good time to walk away. Let's just see what it does. So it drops down and then pops back up. I didn't buy it there because it had just done this false breakout on the one minute chart. So I'm just like, I'm just gonna watch this. It then drops back down to here, this area. And as it curls back up, I saw this is an ABCD setup. So remember, point A is the low of the first pullback. B is the high, so A, B, C is the low, and this low cannot go lower than this first point. So A, B, C, and now we're a buyer if it breaks over this price right here, 75. And that's where I got back in. I got back in at 74, anticipating the break of 75, and there was a 20,000 share seller, and it goes 20,000. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, boom, and it pops up. Now, when it pops up like that, usually they break through high of day. So I wanted to see this go over 85 and get into the 90s immediately. When I saw it pop up into the 80s and start to see resistance, I didn't like that, and so I started selling. I sold half at 79, I hit the bid, I, I hit the bid again at 80, or sold on the ask, got filled on at 81, that was kind of lucky, and then sold the rest at 480 and 477. But with that, I made another uh, 700, or sorry, um, $400. So I went from being up 500 to being up 960. It was a false breakout, as you can see, but you can still profit if you're quick. And so now uh, you see it's starting to curl back up a little bit. It may be worth watching, but it just feels like this is a stock that um, is not giving really big wins. It's a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm up almost $1,000 on it, and I'm going to consider myself happy with that because I started the day down 700 on it. So this is when I know to walk away. Now, you have a choice. You, you can walk away now, and if this ends up going to $556, what, what would you say? Well, geez, I left so much money on the table. I left money on the table. But you have two choices. You can either leave money on the table, or you can, um, <laughs> you can give back your profit and then leave broke, basically. And that's kind of the two choices. You're either leaving money on the table or um, you know, you're, um, you're giving back profit. You can't have it both ways. So for me, I'd rather leave money on the table and walk away with profit. I'm not trying to, you know, hit the lottery and make a million dollars overnight. I will make a million dollars trading and it's over the course of lots of small wins. A thousand dollars a day times a thousand days, right? Maybe $2,000 a day times 500 days. It will happen. It's just a matter of time. So someone asked the other day on YouTube where I'm at with my $583 challenge. So I started with $583 in my account on January 1st, 2017. Less than 600 bucks, right? Now, uh, I did that for a couple reasons. Uh, I'd had a really good year in 2016. I made about a quarter million dollars. And I was sort of at a point where I was like, what, what's next for me? You know, it... I, you know what? I feel like I need to challenge. I need to challenge myself. I need to do something more than just the same old, same old. I, I need to test myself. And we had so many students at the time, um, and we still do, emailing saying, "Ross, you know, I have a thousand dollars. Is that enough to start trading, or whatever? I have fifteen hundred dollars. Is that enough to start trading?" And I always said, "Yes, it is." And I had done a couple small account challenges before, where I started with a thousand dollars and turned it into ten thousand, or whatever. Uh, but it, but it, they were just short little challenges. And so I kind of thought, you know what? I'm going to test myself and do a true small account challenge. I'm going to start. I'm going to clear out all my profits, put all my money away, and start over. Start over with 600 bucks. So I actually put 700 in the account on like December 25th or something, December 27th. January 1st, they take out $115 in fees 
for platform fees. So I end up starting with $583 on January 1st, 2017. And what I did was I focused on trading the same strategy I trade every single day. Consistency, base hits. And so on those first couple days, I had $600 in my account. And remember, because I was trading with an offshore broker, I was not restricted by the PDT levels. There's a number of offshore brokers that you guys can choose from and located in you know, the Bahamas and Jamaica, and there's a couple in Europe. And you know they're not places where I would probably wanna put my life savings. I wanna keep my, most of my money in the United States. But for the sake of this challenge, I was like, whatever, I'll put 600 bucks over there and we'll see what we can do. So I put my 600 in there and I start trading. I can day trade as much as I want and I have margin. And so what I focused on was trading stocks between $3 and $4 because that was the price range where I was able to buy the most shares. Uh, the broker that I was with, they didn't allow margin on stocks under $3. And I wanted to be able to use that margin, that buying power. So stocks between $3 and $4, I was able to buy about 700 to 900 shares of. So I'd buy 900 shares, and as soon as I was up 10 cents, I sold and took the $90 of profit. So on my first day, I made $124 trading with one trade. Second day, I did the same thing. I got into a stock with about 1,000 shares. As soon as I was up 10 cents, I sold. $100 profit, made 150. Third day, same thing. Got into a stock, 1,200 shares. As soon as I was up 15 cents, took the profit, I was up mm, 180 bucks. And I did that again and again and again. Now, as the account grew, I was able to take bigger and bigger size. So by day 10, I was up to, I don't know, maybe from 500, I was, I was up to like 7,000 or 8,000. On uh, day 45, day 44, I broke over $100,000. So what was the difference between the $100 of profit on day one and the $10,000 I made on day 26? I made $10,000 on day 26. The only difference then was that I could take bigger share size. That was the only difference. I wasn't restricted to taking only 500 to 900 shares. I was able to take 10,000 to 15,000. That was it, that was the only difference. Now, well, there was one other difference. The other difference was that uh, because I had built up a cushion, I felt comfortable being a little bit more aggressive. When you've got 500, 600 in your account, you, you take the profit when you're up 10 cents. But once you've built the account up to 40, $50,000, then you might not take profit when you're up 10, 15 cents. You might say, all right, this one, the market's really strong. I'm going to hold it. And maybe we'll end up seeing a 30, 40 cent winner. And, you know, you learn once you have been doing this for a while, when to hold it and be a little more aggressive and when to step back. And so in 45 days, I made $100,000 from 600 bucks. So, you know, who here has $600? It's not a question of how much money you have. Being a successful trader doesn't require a lot of money. In fact, the only thing it really requires is that you have a strategy, that you have a set of rules that you follow every single day. And what you realize is that a lot of the traders out there, um, you know, whether they're on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or wherever they are, we're all trading pretty much a derivative of the same strategy, a variation of the same strategy. We look for volatility. We look for momentum. Mike trades a little bit differently from me. He likes to short stocks. He likes to trade higher price stocks, but he's still looking for volatility. He's looking for stocks that are gonna move five to 10% a day uh, that have potential to make these big two, three, four, five point moves. I'm looking for the same thing. I just trade lower price stocks because that for me is how I built my account. When I first started trading, that's how I built my account. And even though now I've been doing it for years and years, that's what I'm really good at. Sometimes traders will say, Ross, you know, if you're so good at trading small caps, why don't you trade large caps? Or Ross, if you're so good at trading, um, you know, to the long side, why don't you trade the short side? Or Ross, why don't you start trading crypto or Forex? And I kind of think of it as my instrument is, um, you know, let's call it, let's just say it's the banjo. I play the banjo. I play the heck out of that banjo. And you're asking me why I don't play the keyboard more often or why I don't play the drums more often. Yes, these are different instruments, they're all very similar, but they have nuances. And just because you're really good at the banjo doesn't mean you're gonna be really good at the guitar. Yes, it's all music, so you could say it's all the same, Forex or stocks, futures or small caps, large caps or small caps, long or short. They're very similar, but there's differences. And you get good at what you're good at. And if you're a master of one thing, that's all you really need to, to have to be successful. So every single one of you right now, you're one strategy away from being a profitable trader. 
For me, it was just a matter of getting that one strategy where I was really consistent. And then with that consistency followed the confidence. With the confidence came the, you know, the, the comfort taking bigger share size and then came the bigger profits. So, you know, that's how it is with trading. And, uh, you know, for me, obviously, there's been a lot of ups and downs. But at this point, that $583 account is at $603,000. Obviously, my goal is to turn it into a million dollars. Um, you know, and, and when I do, I'm, uh, I'm going to be uh, giving myself a pat on the back. And it'll be just the proof that you can become a millionaire in the market with as little as $600, 583. It's not about having a lot of money. It's not about having a degree in finance. I don't have a degree in finance. It's not about you know coming from a Wall Street family or working on Wall Street or whatever it is. It's just about having a strategy and a set of rules. And you guys are all in the place for most of you where you're working on learning the strategy, developing the strategy. And like I said, you know when you go on YouTube and all these other places, we're all pretty much trading a variation or a derivative of the same basic strategy. And so what you need to learn are the foundations. Obviously, that's what you know that's what we do here more than anything is we teach. That's because we want to help empower you guys. And, uh, you know, it's been uh, so incredible over the last year and a half as I've been growing this account, watching some of you guys growing side by side with me, going through the classes, getting on the other side, trading profitably, making money, uh, you know, seeing students cross these big thresholds, the 100K club, you know, breaking over 250,000, over 500,000. Uh, it's it's really awesome to see. So anyways, um so that's the update on where we're at with the $583 challenge. It continues. The IRA account that I've set up with Lightspeed, I've moved it now from Interactive Brokers to Lightspeed. The IRA account, um, I took uh, money from the $583 challenge and made contributions into my IRA. So when I'm trading in the IRA, that is also part of the same account. Uh, so it's part of the same. All the profits from the IRA go towards the million dollar challenge right now. It, it, that's what it is, it's the million dollar challenge. Um, so whether I'm trading the IRA or my main account, both those profits contribute. They're going in the same direction. And um, yeah, a million dollars, that's the spot. But a month like this is not giving me, um, you know, these are small days. Uh, $900, it's, it's fine. I'm happy with that. You know, it's summer trading, being your own boss is what this is all about. I'll take this, the, the 900. But remember, I made uh, $58,000 in um, three days the first week of May. So when you've made $58,000 in three days, or at the end of November when I made $78,000 in two days, when you have those types of profits, making 700, 800, 900 a day, um, is just kind of a small day. And I'm happy for the profit, I'm happy to be green more than anything, but we are in a market where you gotta take base hits. You're getting lots of base hits, we're not getting those big, big moves, we're not seeing that exuberance, and uh, typically, when we have these types of slow periods and cold periods, um, uh, you know, it, it, it lasts until we see a stock that really takes off. Now, last summer, we uh, we saw a lot of traders, I think, kind of leave the market to go trade cryptocurrencies because cryptocurrencies were so hot last summer. Uh, but this summer, they're really not that hot. So I think traders will most likely stick with the market. Um, some of them might end up starting to trade OTC stocks. You know, we could keep those on watch. I personally don't trade them, but um, you know, sometimes you'll see OTC stocks come into play. Sometimes you'll see penny stocks come into play. The thing with trading is that because we're all trading a variation of the same strategy, we're all looking for the same thing. We're looking for volatility. We're like you know sharks in the market. We're looking for these opportunities. And uh, if you're seeing them on stocks between three dollars and seven dollars, that's where all the sharks are going to be. That's where everyone is trying to you know get a piece of the action. If that moves and the feeding is over on stocks between fifteen and twenty dollars, that's where we're going to see the action. Sometimes it's on stocks between thirty cents and fifty cents. So right now it's not really in any particular spot. We had yeah, SEII, a kind of familiar name, GLMD yesterday, a higher price name, uh, HEAR, a little bit of a higher price name, but not seeing uh, you know for me uh, really good opportunities. So. You know, I'm I'm okay with just grinding a little bit of profit here and there, being consistent, and that's kind of um, you know what it's about for me right now. So, all right, today's the 106th day of the year, finishing up $960.84, and um, that's good. Now, uh, before we wrap up for today, 
uh, I, you know, this is obviously whatever, June 13th, and I've been um, hearing, you know, kind of through the grapevine that uh, some some of the, the kids are having their last days of school. You guys know I go to the chiropractor, and <laughs> for whatever reason, there's, there's always kids there. And, you know, so I hear them talking about how it's the last day of school, summer break, blah, blah, blah. And um, so it makes me think back on what it felt like first day of summer, right? The first day of summer, you got the whole summer in front of you, you got these three months in front of you and you get to stay up late and it's just that amazing feeling of, you don't have to get up early, you don't have to go into you know, school or whatever it is, high school, college. And for me, the feeling that I have as a trader, that is basically that feeling of like, I every single day is, feels like the beginning of summer. It's, it's now been uh, almost 10 years since I worked a traditional nine to five job, almost 10 years. And um, the last job that I worked that was really a traditional job was um, when I was working in architecture and design in New York City. And so for me, it's like to think about that 10 years of not having to answer to a boss, not having to go into a nine to five job, I mean, it is like every single day feels like, you know, first day of summer. I love it. And I know you guys who are just getting started, a lot of you guys are feeling that way too. You know, it's like once you start realizing the potential, you just get hooked. And I think for me, even on the days when I lost money, and I'm sure some of you guys are red today for whatever reason, uh, even on the days when I lost money, I would just get more and more excited because I would see that, yeah, just as quickly as I lost that 500, I could have made 500 if I was a little bit of a better trader. So it kept motivating me to become better and better and better. And, um, you know, now, I'm, now I'm, I'm, I'm where I'm at. The motivation for me to keep working despite the losses and, you know, despite the, the setbacks was that knowledge that once I get to the other side, you know, every day is the first day of summer. You know, I'm not gonna have to ever go into a nine to five job again. Uh, I won't ever have a boss again. And, um, you know, and that's that's great. Now, as I say that, now I've got a team of 30 employees that work for me and, you know, that, that call me boss. Well, actually, I asked them to call me daddy and they don't, so they call me boss. But, you know, we've got a team of 30 that every single day they come in and they're, um, you know, they now are working a nine to five job. And so I try to be um, a really good leader for them and uh, give them a job where they're really excited to come to work every day, where they don't feel like it's a nine to five job like the one that, that I used to have, that I think about as being like a nightmare of one that I would be like <laughs> just so angry that I had to go to. Uh, and I think we've done a good job of that. I think for the most part, everyone on the team is really excited to come to work and um, and they do love what they do. And some of them are also learning how to trade because they see this opportunity. They're like, wow, okay, this is pretty cool. I see Ross doing it every day. I want to learn more about it. But the truth is trading is not for everybody. Trading requires you to be willing to take some risk, um, you know, and, and that's not for everyone. I, and I get that. My wife is totally risk adverse. She would never want to trade stocks. She just wouldn't want to do it. And there's a lot of people like that. So, so I get that this is not something that's for everyone. But uh, for people that are, they've either owned their own business or have been kind of wanting to be self-employed or freelance, that kind of have that, that independent streak to just want to do it yourself, this is a great opportunity, being able to trade, because it's one of those things that you can totally do on your own. Uh, but like anything else, it's nice to have a little bit of help when you're getting started and, um, you know, that's kind of where you guys have that choice. Do you want to reinvent the wheel and try to figure this all out on your own? Or do you want to be part of a group where we're all doing this together and we're doing it as a team and where you don't have to reinvent the wheel? I can show you the strategy that I use every single day and you can start trading it in the simulator tomorrow, right? That's, that's kind of the goal for me. And I went the, the, and you can see this is our trading simulator here. I went the route of trying to reinvent the wheel mostly because when I got into the market 10 years ago, um, it was just very, very different. There weren't, um, you know, technology was different. The platforms weren't as good. Access to really good information just wasn't really there. If you want to try to figure out how to trade, you just kind of had to do it on your own through trial and error. I mean, there were some people out there, um, you know, selling courses and DVDs, but 
you know, a lot of them were, you know, kind of the, the blue, the green screen, someone, you know, superimposed standing in front of like a, you know, mansion or a Ferrari. And, you know, it just felt like you can't, I just didn't feel like I could trust any of that stuff. So I went the route of trying to reinvent the wheel and it took me like two years of trial and error. And reality is right now, if a hundred of you guys say, I'm, I'm going to try to figure this out on my own, 90 of you will fail. 10 of you will succeed. Only five of you will be making enough money to actually quit your job. And the five of you that make enough money to actually quit your job, you're gonna be trading a strategy almost the same as mine anyways. You just had to take this really, really long path to figure out that the stocks to trade every single day are the ones that can move 20 to 30%. And the pullbacks are the best entries. And that this is the place we get in, this is where we set our stops. So it's like, you know, you can take that path, that really long kind of path, or, um, you know, you can learn the strategy that I trade every day. And so that's kind of where you guys have that choice. But um, you know, if you guys, some of you relate more to Mike's strategy, you like trading the large caps and that's okay. You know, one of the things that we talk about is that trader profile. Are you a, um, you know, a trader trying to build a small account? Are you a trader who's trading with retirement, you know, a retirement account and you've got to be more conservative? Are you focused on, uh, you know, taking lots of trades every day or do you want to just take one, two, three trades a day? Uh, you know, it's, there's, there's some variations there, but at the end of the day, we're all trading in a very similar way. It's just kind of adjusting for your risk tolerance and stuff like that. So anyways, um, a little bit of a longer midday recap here for today, but um, some of those questions on YouTube got me thinking. So if you're watching on YouTube, you're watching on Facebook, throw the questions down there below and I'll come back and answer them and maybe uh, it'll get me um, inspired for something I'll say tomorrow or Friday. All right, so that's it for me. I hope you guys have a great afternoon. We'll be back at it. First thing, tomorrow morning, around 9, 9.15 for pre-market analysis. All right, I'll see you guys in the morning. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Well, I was just working on the dream board for my next home run trade. Hopefully it comes soon. Until then, make sure you subscribe to get email alerts anytime I go live or upload new videos. Until then, happy surfing.